Hey and welcome back to the lab. And today here on the bench we have ICOM IC7610. And uh, this radio is suffering from a faulty key input. So um, we have two, one at the front and one at the back. So in front uh, that is for the well, that is the electronic uh, keyer system for a pedal and then we have a straight one which is on the back side and the uh, key um, port on the back side has a problem so it uh, simply doesn't work. So let's see what we can do. Okay and here is our IC7610 and uh, testing you know uh, a keyer input is uh, quite easy even if you do not have a pedal or a normal keyer whatever so you simply put um, you know uh, a jack here in and then uh, now we have here of course the uh, electronic uh, keyer system so normally for uh, a pedal and uh, well it's uh, quite easy so let me uh, zoom in here a little bit um, so you really can go here to the contacts and you hear so that are the dots right and here that are the dash dashes right so and of course we can increase here the speed So, as more professional you are on the CW, you know, uh, as fast as you can uh, run the system. Um, however, uh, what we see here, that uh, our input here, so the electro electronic key input for the pedal is fine. So, and of course, not of course, but uh, uh, this radio has a second uh, key port if you like so that is on the back and let's check out that one okay so that is the back side uh, nothing uh, special and uh, when I zoom in here a little bit so you see here is our second uh, key port and uh, let's do exactly the same um, so for a test we have uh, our object uh, insert here and uh, well so this here is uh, no electronic key so that means um, normally we should hear at least on one of uh, these ports a tone right but we don't it is uh, entirely silent and now you uh, could uh, think okay uh, you have to activate it in the menu no that is a straight key input so it should work directly but it does not okay and the first what we uh, can do to test it so you see I've now connected here my uh, voltmeter um, to uh, the radio already I mean uh, at least uh, my ground connection here over our uh, key jack right and uh, normally uh, we should uh, probe here a positive uh, voltage so normally this uh, contacts go directly to uh, um, a processor which uh, is taking in the information that uh, someone is keying here and uh, therefore in this situation uh, we should see at least a uh, voltage 0.6 so that is almost nothing and we do not really see something here so well yeah um, that is not really a, a voltage something is wrong and uh, well what you can do now I mean that here is our uh, ground over our key jack okay but what we can do we can go uh, here to a normal or chassis ground let me uh, call it uh, that way and uh, now can we read something 
over chassis ground and of course since that is here uh, a straight key not uh, for a pedal we only would read our voltage on one side and let's see what we get ah look here and we see 3.2 volt so that is uh, the processor voltage so we get out of our processor over a resistor our 3.2 volt and normally uh, you short this to ground and that gives low to the input of our processor and then the processor knows ah okay someone is keying me and then everything should work but you see here our processor is delivering the voltage over the resistor that means our processor and the resistor in between is working just fine but we do not get it here over our um, you know over our keyer port okay the conclusion uh, could be or yeah is that uh, we seems to have a problem here with uh, our internal uh, keyer ground which is at least going to the same ground but there are normally components in between um, there are normally some coils uh, to reduce um, noise whatever uh, so therefore okay let's test it in a different way Alright, so we assume that maybe something is wrong here with our internal um, ground. So let's go for test purposes over our chassis ground. And is it possible that it works over chassis? Ah! Yeah, okay. So that means obviously our keyer itself and processor and what have we um, is working but obviously not over our ground here so let's have a look into our schematic okay and I think uh, we can see it best here so that is our RF unit where we are looking at and at our RF unit we have here our key input so let me enlarge it here a little bit that uh, we understand what I've tested. So look here, here over this uh, coil L403 we were able to test our 3.3 um, volt and but we was not able to test it here over the ground and uh, if we look very carefully here so you see of course our ground connector from our key or uh, our jack is connected over this EP4004 uh, connected to ground so we were not able to operate the key over our both contacts here at our key port but when we connected our ground to chassis ground then we were able to operate the key so maybe our AP4004 um, is uh, gone open so that is what we need uh, to check uh, first to understand if that is the problem I mean it cannot be here our L403 simply because that is a line where we get our 3.3 uh, volt over so therefore that all up to our processor is fine but here something is wrong here so let us crack open the radio and let's see what's really going on here okay so what we are looking at here so that here is our main unit but you see um, the key is uh, here so the key terminal right and it is not 
on the main unit and that is what uh, we have seen on our schematic as well so we need to get access to our RF unit the RF unit is underneath our main unit so that means we really have to take every single part in order to be able to flip it over or however we can uh, get it uh, arranged but as a matter of fact we need to take it apart to get underneath so let's go on okay so what you see here so I have everything, everything uh, disconnected I can flip it over and uh, now um, we can take uh, off this shielding here in order to get down to our PCB and unfortunately it is uh, still not enough because the little uh, coil is um, underneath uh, so from the solar sh solar side and yeah that means um, we need to go a little bit more down to you know the other side okay so here is our board in a test configuration and uh, we see here so that is our keyboard and uh, look here on the PCB there down there we have our little component um, which is in question so let's have a look through our microscope to see what's going on look here and that is our little component so what we see is that it is burned out so literally you can see the heat um, everywhere and of course that is um, an open component and that is the reason why it is not working any longer so we need to replace our little uh, our little coil um, or ferret whatever and then it will work again okay so let's try to get our component uh, off in order of course to replace it let's see if we can get it easily off or if we have here a problem okay it is off which is good and let's see what's the quality of our um, of our board is uh, we cannot see quite a lot uh, let's see uh, okay let's see what we can do here hmm Ah, uh, you see that uh, it has burned underneath as well. I mean, there's a little bit glue um, because all these components uh, get uh, glued in. But uh, other than that, yeah. Okay, so let me clean it and let's prepare to put a new um, component in. Okay, as you can see, our new part is in. It is uh, still a little bit uh, wet but uh, it is working so I've already tested continuity which is fine so from that point um, we can put our circuit together and then we can test okay so our RF board is back in and um, important step or important uh, test is now that we go here from uh, let me see that you can see it a little bit better uh, here from I mean continuity right so now we go here to our key earth uh, connector and we go here of a chassis and you hear now we have nice 
uh, ground over our little uh, ferret, of course. So, therefore, that is now fixed. Now we need to put everything together to test it finally when we can take our radio back in service. As you can see, our main board is back in, so everything um, is fine and uh, we are almost ready for testing. Okay, so we are ready for testing. First, let me switch the radio on. Where is the right key? Let me check. Must be that one. And... Ah, yeah, okay. Okie do. Yeah, so you hear a little bit uh, static. That is good. Now, let me go a little bit deeper here. So, like we have access to our port. And of course, what we're gonna test first is um, do we get now our 3.3 uh, uh, volt here uh, over this uh, port? And I can already see it. Look there. So now our 3.2, uh, 3.3 volt are present as uh, expected here as it should be. So that means normally, normally, uh, now our key should work. So let's test that. We do exactly the same. We go now here over our ground port and now let's see ha wow wow it is back working very nice so I mean we do not know why it happens I think it is a kind of operation um, operation operator error whatever you want to call it so in a degree there must have been voltage here over this port I don't know what really happened but I mean this little ferret must uh, it must be it must have a, have a reason why it burned out so well we never know but but what we can see so far is that even such a little component for let me say 10 cent or what I don't know so that produces a really huge work so you have seen uh, what we have what we have had to take apart and that really took time so you see even if the part is cheap the whole repair is not anyways thanks for watching hope you learned something and catch you next time bye